Darius Tyler here at the Israel International All-Season Competition, checking out team number 1574, Ms. Carr. Uh, fantastic team, by the way. To help me speak more about this, I have Yair, Orr, and Noam. And this robot here has been absolutely on fire here uh, at this event. You sure you've heard of Miss Carr before. They've been great throughout the uh, season as well. But this year, a fantastic robot they have. Of course, we'll follow the cargo journey going through on that. Talk some about the automation and the climbing that they've gone through it. Uh, and then we'll show off some of their software that's gone through as well. Coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Up with your sword drive, actually, we got a sword drive module here. Talk to me about uh, what's going on in it and maybe any advice for teams looking to do swerve as well. Uh, so I start with what we do for every mechanism we design for the team is our team motto. If it won't be simple, it simply won't be. And as I go through the mechanism, you'll see what I mean. So I'll go uh, top, bottom uh, to top. We begin with the belt, we uh, talk to a special belt company. Uh, the problem we saw is uh, you can either choose a strong belt that will have low friction or a high friction that will deteriorate fast. So we, they gave us a lot of uh, different belts and we chose a custom one which has low deterioration and high friction. Next thing is this embedded gear. One thing in the past 12 and past years we saw the bevel was outside and it got uh, smashed by the breeze and so we embedded it into the wheel. Uh, next, no, no, keep it. It's the one of the things we were most worried about. It is triangle that holds most of the robot, and we wanted to be light but still strong. So what we did, we used topology, which is an inter, uh, type of artificial intelligence which calculates the optimal uh, shape for the sh for the part. And the third thing, like I said, third thing, like I said, uh, for simplicity, instead of using a timing belt, we use a gear system which we can uh, produce in our shop and it's easy to maintain. Next thing. Uh, the third thing we try to make simpler is the encoder. Most teams we saw use the different kind of uh, gears to reduce into an uh, external encoder. What we did is created a nylon part that, uh, makes the, uh, that uh, over here concludes into a hex shaft that connects into the RAVE encoder, which is a half inch uh, hex socket. To make it simple, and that's it. Makes sense to me, a great demonstration of, of that custom sword drive as well. Lastly, I just want to ask you, for if uh, a new team is looking at doing sword for the first time, what is maybe some advice you'd give to them? Uh, try to make it as cheap as you can, and maybe start with our prototype sword. What we did is use it, create it using only stuff we had in our workshop. We didn't order any parts. So we can uh, try to experiment in software and, me and the mechanical aspect. Uh, before actually paying any money, because service is a very expensive uh, mechanism. We'll start to go into your robot here. We'll start off with your uh, intake and follow that cargo journey and cargo path all through. Uh, your team has a super wide intake uh, with this. I love it. Uh, this roller, I'd love to hear more about as well, but give us an overview of your intake and we'll follow that cargo journey. So the first thing we thought this season is that, we, that chasing cargo would be the main thing. So we needed our intake to be as wide as possible. This is a new intake that we did for the off-season, but uh, uh, the older versions had a uh, full over-the-bumper intake with this, uh, with this tube on the bottom. But after like, the season, we realized that uh, like, uh, getting the balls to the center would be much faster and much easier. So we cut the bumper and the chassis to, for that. After that, the ball goes into the indexer. It has the mechanism wheels that drop the ball down into the Omni wheels, where they go on in on the belt down over here, where where they stop uh, with where they stop waiting to be shot. After we have two or one ball and we want to shoot it, then it goes up here. It goes up here into the shooter, where we edit, where we have the differential shooter. One of the most important things for us this season was to be able to shoot from any spot on the field 
So we used the very large wheels and by changing the by changing the speeds of each one, we can change the angle and the speed of the ball. When you're looking from uh, packaging your robot here, uh, you know, we'll talk about your climbing a little bit, but you got to do a decent amount of ball movement to get your cargo gear. Uh, and then your shooter kind of has a lower exit uh, space as well, too. So from a packaging standpoint, where you, when you were looking at creating this, uh, why was this like the best route for Miss Car to go with? So yeah, we will talk about this in a moment, but one of uh, the important things we had was to be able to climb three robots through the traversal. So we have a unique uh, uh, climb location, which uh, changes the location of everything else on the robot. So starting to wrap up on the robot itself, then we'll talk about software a little bit. Let's talk about your climber here. Uh, we alluded to this a little bit ago, but your packaging for your climber is allowed to do some kind of cool things with it. So talk to me what's gone into your climber. We'll see a demonstration of it as well, too. Uh, so like I said in the beginning, we try to make everything more sim simpler. So instead of using a, a telescopic uh, elevator, we use a belt actuator, which is much stronger and much easier also to build, design, and is much cheaper. So actually what you do is wrap around the, the uh, HTD belt with embedded uh, steel fibers, so it will be stronger around the pulley. And we use a 1 to 40 Versa with Falcons, we can pull around 600 kilos of force. So we can even, we, ha we have a Dolores battery, we can still climb. It will be so, but we always will be able to climb, wow. no matter the battery. And another thing we did, what I think we most worried about is falling from the climb. What, uh, one thing that can lead to that is this uh, hooks colliding with the bars as, while we're climbing. So what we did, we used a uh, one-way door, I don't know how you call it in English, but when we collide with the bar while climbing, instead of falling out of the climb, it just collapses into itself, and once we're in the clear, it comes back up. So can we see a demonstration happen? If you can just kind of narrate what's happening during that demo. Okay, so first thing we'll do is go it for, get it up, so it can hook into the first bar, second bar, and then we'll get it back down, and then close the t small hooks, close the small hooks, and press the, uh, move the actuator forward so we can hook onto the third bar. And then it's a repetitive action of getting back there, pulling, and pushing over and over again. When you're climbing, that's so stable, it looks like, as it goes through. Like, how did you get that where you just don't have as much swing as some other teams? Uh, so what we did, you can see there's uh, rub latex uh, rubbers over the hook, so it will reduce the swing. Let's start to wrap up on your robot and talk about some software uh, attributes that have gone into it. Uh, so I know we're going to demonstrate a few things here on screen, so walk us through uh, what your team's been doing and uh, we'll show up a few things as well. Sure, so the first thing we did is have a detailed match report after each match from the logs using data log from WPI Lib. So basically we can see the robot's trajectory in the autonomous to see if it missed the ball or something or it, if it thinks it tracked its path correctly. Then we can also see how many balls we've shot and what our cycle time was between each shot. And we see a lot of useful statistics here to make sure uh, that if we miss a ball in one match, we know the exact reason why we missed it. We have, as you can see, we have a detailed table of all shots and we see all the parameters which go into shooting a ball. From the uh, velocities of all of the wheels on robot to the errors from the limelight. So we can see exactly why we missed a shot and that enable us to reach a very high um, percentage of, of correct shots uh, during the end of each competition. We also see other metrics like robot voltage and air pressure. And as I said, this worked with WPI Lib's data log utility. We have two, two other main themes. The first of all is we've added a custom built dashboard because we've had some problem with shuffleboard in the middle of the season. Um, so it's not very um, special but it's a new dashboard and we're, it's open source and we're also working on a second edition which can hopefully be useful to other teams as well. Um, so that's about the dashboard and the final thing is um, a theme in our team this year that's been very very helpful and I think couldn't be talked about enough and that's fault detection. So one of the problems we face in all the competitions is the limelight being disconnected and the first step in, in solving that problem is diagnosing it. So knowing when it is disconnected. 
So for example, we use some parameter like the latency to figure out all the time if it's alive and know when it's disconnected. So the drivers can react, the coach can react, and we can react. Uh, that's the first thing. And we also, about the swerve modules in the beginning. So as you can see, we have an absolute encoder for the rotation. So we know at boot up time um, that it's straight. And it's a prime example of why fault detection has been so important to us this year. In the pre journal we've had issues um, that when it wasn't started up correctly and the encoder was disconnected, we couldn't drive the robot because Swerve, when one of the modules is not in the right angle uh, with regard to the others, is very difficult to move and it also takes up a bunch of current. So we, the thing we did is basically all the time we check if this encoder is connected. If it is, we update our heading to what it says. And if it's disconnected, we use the Rotation Falcon's um, integrated encoder. So not only mid-match does it continue working, but in the beginning of the match, we start up the angle at zero. So the, in the worst case, if it is disconnected, we can still drive in the match. It won't be optimal, obviously, because this has much greater... But you can keep going, at least. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Awesome. Well, Miss Card, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your robot and your team. Uh, been a big fan of your team for many years now, and uh, I think uh, looking at the future, all these cool iterations you're starting to make, can't wait to see what, you, what happens for next year during Charge Up as well. So good luck here, of course, but can't wait to see futures as well. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team.